Hey everybody, welcome to Death Ground Reviews, and uh, today I've got a book review for you. Uh, the book is called On Writing Horror. Um, it's by the, it's a handbook by the Horror Writers Association, edited by Mort Castle. And the book's basically a, a writing reference book to help you write and sell frightening fiction. So I, uh, I read this book, I bought this years ago when I was a young college student. I I decided I was going to be serious about crafting my own fiction, and I always had an interest in suspense and horror and science fiction and whatnot. And so, you know, I found this book focused on that topic specifically, so I had to pick it up. Um, and it was a good book, by the way. It's been years since I've read it, but I remember it being very good. It's divided into eight different parts. So you got part one, which is horror literature, horror and horror literature. That's what it's titled. Basically just goes into why we write horror, why people enjoy reading it. It, it includes uh, Stephen King's speech when he, when he accepted the 2003 National Book Award for Distinguished Contribution to American Letters. Um, then you have part two, which is titled An Education in Horror. And it just goes into various horror themes, horror tropes. In fact, one section of that section, section within that section, um, is uh, about 21 horror classics. Let's go ahead, actually, and I'll tell you what they listed as the classic horror novels you should read if you want to educate yourself about the genre. So they had uh, <clears throat> Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. That was listed number one. And they have Dracula, number two, by Bram Stoker. Ah, here's one I wasn't as familiar with. The Ghost Pirates, by William Hope Hodgkin. Hodgson. Hodgson. Um, apparently, I guess he was a sailor himself, and he utilized a lot of his sailing experiences to write about his, to, you know, including that, inf included that information in his horror stories. Excuse me, my tongue keeps getting twisted right now. <laughs> I'll try to get better at that for you. Next one is uh, The Collected Ghost Stories of M.R. James. Um, then Burn, Witch, Burn by A. Merritt. To Walk the Night by William Sloan. The Dunwich Horror and Others by H.P. Lovecraft. Fear by L. Ron Hubbard. Hmm. That one sounds particularly interesting. I know L. Ron Hubbard, isn't he the one that... Uh, uh, started Scientology or whatever. Apparently he's written a horror novel too, so that might be fun to read. Ah, uh, this one I have on my Kindle, but I haven't read yet. It's called Darker Than You Think by Jack Williamson. It's a werewolf novel. Um, then Conjure Wife by Fritz Lieber. Uh, I Am Legend by Richard Matheson, who is also a legend himself of the horror genre. Rosemary's Baby by Ira Levin. Hell House by Richard Matheson. The October Country by Ray Bradbury. Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury. That one I've got on my list to read. The Exorcist by William Peter Blatty. That one's just huge. I mean, that... The movie's even far more popular than the book. I've read the book years ago. Um, I don't know. And that's one I'll have to reread again and, and review for you guys. I remember it being kind of weak in some places, but but still disturbing. Falling Angel by William... I can't even pronounce the last name. It's Russian or something. Um, it's a private eye genre horror novel, it says. I'll read the little caption. Horror and mystery fiction are close companions. However, it is a rare conglomeration that combines supernatural horror with the private eye genre and makes it work. This novel takes some old ideas and twists them into something new and compelling. The horror is frightening. The mystery is well presented. The ending is both shocking and yet somehow logical. Perhaps the best hard-boiled horror novel ever written. Really? Falling Angel is what it's called. Then, of course, you got Salem's Lot by Stephen King. The Stand by Stephen uh, and Watchers by Dean Coots. I've heard good things about Watchers. I haven't read that one. Interesting story about Watchers. I Dean Coots brought this up in an author talk. 
he says when he when that novel came out he got just floods a deluge of letters from people saying the the murder that happens in the beginning of the book is just so bloody it's so bloody we're upset by this and and Kuntz was like I didn't describe one drop of blood in that introductory seat murder scene I did not depict one drop of blood you guys just imagined it on your own because I depicted the other details really well good lesson to learn as a horror writer by the way of of finding sig or, or just a writer in general not even just a horror writer but just to be able to depict the significant details in a scene that can stand out for the rest but um but yeah i had to i had to get these books on my list and uh and read them but uh so the next section part three is developing horror concepts ah another one another subsection it's called a world of dark and disturbing ideas by J. N. williamson by the way all these all these essays within the sections are are written by well-accomplished horror and suspense writers so now you're you're getting an education from you know people that are well experienced and expert in their field but let me go to that section page 40 it is but yeah, in this in this particular section, Williamson he first defines what a useful premise is, and he says one, it may be new or hasn't been developed into a plot for quite a while, or two, the writer is comfortable with, and three, for which it can be reasonably assumed an accessible market exists. So, in Williamson's opinion, those. A story needs to meet those three criteria to be a useful premise. And then he kind of talks about just, he calls it the hypnagogic state. I guess it's a, a meditative state. It's a state of deep focus that he must manipulate his mind to enter before he's able to tap into story ideas. And he gives an example of, of when he got the idea for his novel, The Offspring, he had awakened from a, a nightmare and um, he had laid in bed for several minutes and just the, the vivid details of this nightmare replayed in his mind. And he actually outlined the basic idea of the novel that very early morning, just from awakening from that nightmare. But a, a fun part of this section is... He, he puts himself to a challenge and he says, I'm going to come up with 10 different ideas um, in one hour. And I'm, I'm going to basically just write them all out. I'll read to you a couple of the ideas he came up with in that, in that hour. So here's one. Idea number four. A man is trying to quit smoking. One morning he hungers badly for a cigarette and locates a pack of his brand, which he had concealed. Tearing off the cellophane, he tries to tap one cigarette into view. A creature never seen before by any living man crawls out and eats its way through his chest into the closest lung. The last thing the man sees is the warning label on the edge of the cigarette pack and the words, may be hazardous to your health. He, he also emphasizes um, that there's a difference between a use the other difference between a useful premise is there's other premises that are more just practice you know it's if if it doesn't meet those three criteria he defined earlier they're more practice premises that you would basically just you know practice writing a story and the craft practice the craft of of stories ah uh, here's another cool idea he played with number 10 ufo aliens are actually vampires they abduct people for their usual bloody reasons, and the experiments that people remember are merely false screen memories for the bloodlettings they suffered. The aliens are gray in color for the obvious reason, reason that they are the undead. They have no intention of taking over the world beyond what they've already done, because nobody capable of stopping them believes in them, and their food supply is, with Earth densely populated, unlimited. But one of them, a leader, makes the mistake of falling in love with his abductee. <laughs> I don't know. Something about that one catches my interest. I kind of want to... I guess it's the 
the point of view of the vampire or the alien, depicting it from the point of view instead of the abductee's point of view. That just sounds fun. Although I guess in a novel you would maybe switch between the two point of views. But I don't know, that sounds fun. But yes, that's that's one of my favorite subsections of part three. Um, part four is horror crafting. Um, so it basically talks about like developing characters and Ah, David Morell. He's one of my favorite he's the creator of Rambo. He's one of my favorite suspense novelists. He has an essay in here titled, He Said, She Asked, Some Thoughts About Dialogue. So that sounds like a fun one to read. I don't remember reading it. I, I've i never been too interested in dialogue, I guess. Although it is a useful thing to learn, and I better get my act together and start learning more about it. To write good fiction, you know. Believable characters gotta talk in a believable way. But, uh... Yeah, that's cool to see David Morell writing an essay in this book. Um, part five is horror, art, innovation, excellence. So I guess it's emphasizing, you know, just just new ways, new directions that authors are taking the horror genre and ways that you can capitalize on that. And that's why it's so important to become educated in the genre you're writing in, but also exploring other genres outside of it because there's ideas you can glean from those other genres to bring into the field you work in um part six tradition and modern times so i guess it's just talk again it's kind of emphasizing horror traditions and and um ways that they're being updated to our modern times kind of reminds me of something stephen king once said he said that a lot of his stories were sort of Edgar Allan Poe and Lovecraft type stories, but he updated them to a modern time, you know, like Pet Cemetery is kind of like uh, the monkey's paw, that part, that old short story, but he updated it to a more sophisticated, you know, version of our modern time. And part seven is genre and subgenre, so it explores different genres of the within the horror genre. And then we got part eight, the horror business, selling, marketing, promoting. So that section emphasizes, you know, ways you can search the market to find magazines, to find um, agents and publishing companies and whatnot, places to sell your fiction, and also ways you can promote your fiction. So yeah, overall, it, it it's a great book with with great experts that are there to inform you. Um, some of them provide little mini, you know, exercises, kind of like the ones that I, I talked about there, that you can utilize yourself, you know. Maybe, you know, I'm, I think later I'm going to sit down and try to come up with 10 ideas of my own in like two hours too. Just sounds like a fun exercise. That's the other thing I love about books like, like this one, On Writing Horror, is they always get me stirred up with excitement. They always get me in the mood that I'm hungry, you know, to start writing stories. So, but yeah, guys, go check it out. My other fellow horror writers, um, suspense writers, ah, any writers. There might be useful things, even if you're a writer of romance or, or historical fiction. You might find something useful in this book. You never know. But uh, that's my review for, the, for today, and I'll talk to you guys later. This is Death Ground Reviews. See ya.